to God. Glory 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 to God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give praise to you. We give praise to the Lord. We give praise to you, Lord. We give praise to you. We give praise to you, Lord Jesus. We give praise to you because you are God. Beside you, there is no other God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, glorious God. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Let your word like, be like a hammer that will break rocks in pieces. Father, we come before you as empty pictures, fulfilled fountain. We look unto you today. We look unto you. We look unto you, God. There's none like you nowhere. You are God, and beside you there is no other. There is no other God. There is no other Savior. There is no other Lord. And we come before you in the name of Jesus. You know us better than we know ourselves. Let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. Father, let your word go forth like a hammer that will break rocks in pieces. Let righteousness run down like a mighty stream. Let the weak say I'm strong. The bounds of I can free. I'm free in the name of Jesus. Let men turn to you, God. Let men come running, saying, what must I do to be saved? Oh, Father, draw men. Draw men. Draw men. Draw men by your drawing power. Draw men to this wisdom. Draw them, God. Draw them. Draw them. Draw them with revelational knowledge. Draw them because you're God and beside you, there is no other. There is no other. There is no other. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, glorious Father, we thank you. Glorious Father, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing and the things that you're doing. They are marvelous in our eyes. We look to you, God. We look to you. We look unto you. We look unto you. In the name of Jesus, we look unto you. We look unto you. We look unto you in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for your great love. We thank you for your great wisdom. We thank you for your great power in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us, oh God. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. We're in need of you this day. Hallelujah. We need your wisdom this day. We need your, oh God, we need you. We need you to have mercy on us this day, God, in the name of Jesus. Speak to us. Speak to us. Speak to us, God. Speak to us. Speak to us. Speak to us. Speak to us, God. Let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. Speak to us, Father. Speak to us this day. Mm, speak to us this day. Speak to us this day. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Father, speak to us this day. Speak to us this day. Speak to us. Speak to us, God. Speak to us. Speak to us this day in the name of Jesus. Speak unto us. Speak unto us. Speak unto us. Speak unto us, God. Speak unto us. Speak unto us. Speak unto us. Speak unto us. We need you today. We can do nothing without you, God. We can do nothing without you. We can do nothing without your sacred grace. Nothing without your power. Nothing without your healing grace. Nothing without you. We are nothing without you. We are nothing without you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. In the name of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Bring us to this truth. Bring us to revelation knowledge. Bring us to wisdom. Bring us to the joy of the Lord. It's which is our strength. In the name of Jesus, oh, great glorious Savior. Have mercy upon us today. Have mercy upon us, excellent God. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, Father. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost speak to us. Let the Holy Ghost speak to us. Let the Holy Ghost speak to us. Speak, Holy Spirit of God. Speak to us. Draw us to you. Draw us to your heart. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us. Speak to us. In the name of Jesus. Let the wisdom of God speak to us. Let revelation or knowledge speak to us. Holy Spirit of God. Oh, we are yours. We're yours. We're yours. We are yours, Holy Spirit. We're yours, Holy Spirit. We're yours, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we're here for your usage. Oh, Father, open the eyes of the blind. Open the eyes of the lame. Cause them to hear you and to know that you are God. And beside you, there is no other God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, glorious God. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's blessings to you. Amen. Atlanta is in the room. Thank you, Atlanta. Uh, evangelist Lula Jones, we thank God for you. Pastor Deborah Cooper, God's blessings to you. So happy you're with us. Amen. Of uh, Augusta, Georgia, Catherine Webster, God blessings to you. Uh, uh, I want to say, uh, Anguilla, Anguilla, Anguilla is on the line. Mississippi, uh, Amen. Jennifer F. Um, Harris, woman of God, thank you. God blessings to you. Amen. Stephen Hanks, God blessings to you. Uh, South Carolina, South Carolina, God bless you to you. The lifeline, God bless you to you. All of you, the Lord's people, we thank God for your being in place today. Thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for you. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. As we continue to go into the word of the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. God is... Amen. He is super, super, super God. A super, super God. And we thank God for this woman of God, Victoria Orange. Amen. We thank God for her ministry. Amen. We thank God for that. Amen. Listen, it is time for us to move into the word of the Lord. It's time for us to move into the word of the Lord. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for what the Lord is doing. The thing that he's doing is indeed marvelous in our eyes. Amen. So we're going to shift here. And man, we're going to get into our lesson today. But just so you know, our music today is music by Victoria Ranch, Spirit of the Spirits. And, and Kyle Love It. The, this means war. Four hours of instrumental. So those persons that want to look up, look them up. Amen. There you have it. There you have it. Amen. Today, we thank God for the word. We thank God for each one of you. And Yvonne Roberts, a Sylvania, Georgia, is in the house. God bless you, woman of God. Thank God for you. It is so good for us to be here on this day. Amen. We want to share with you the people of God. Amen. Uh, our overall title, the thing that we're looking at today, the Holy Ghost enhances your willingness to share Christ. The Holy Ghost enhances your, amen, willingness. The Holy Ghost enhances your willingness to share Christ. We want to talk about that. We want to talk about the Holy Ghost enhances your willingness to share Christ. And that's our overall topic today. And our first subtopic, the Holy Ghost ministers wisdom and prepares uh, lives for salvation. The Holy Ghost ministers wisdom and prepares lives for salvation. Glory to God. And after that, our second subtopic, if you will wait patiently on the Lord, he can turn all your enemies into disciples. If you can wait patiently on the Lord, he can turn all your enemies into disciples. We're going to talk about that as well. All right, and thirdly, our third subtopic, our third subtopic, uh, where is the Ananias of your ministries that's gonna cry to the souls of your day? 
Where is the Ananiases of your ministry that is going to cry to the souls of your day? Amen. Where are they? Where, where, where are they at? Amen. God bless them to you. Amen. The Lord's people, we thank God for you. Amen. 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 Let us get into the lesson. Also, I will listen just so that some of you will know. Some of you will, will know. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you will know. Amen. I've been ministering for a while with our little background music, and I've become accustomed to it. Amen. And some of you can hear it. Some of you cannot hear it. Amen. But we thank God. We thank God that we have it here, our music, our background music. Uh, glory to God. Uh, anyway, something just came through, kind of just hit a, a little... Go, what is that? What is that button? So we're not going to worry about what is that. We're going to focus on where we are right now. So the Holy Ghost ministers wisdom and prepare lives for salvation. We're going to talk about that. Now that's going to pick up from where we left off on yesterday. That's going to pick up from where we left off on yesterday. Yesterday we were in the 8th chapter of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 26 through 40. Acts chapter 26 through 40 is going to deal with the Holy Ghost minister's wisdom and prepares lives for salvation. And then we're going to just breeze right on through to uh, the ninth chapter of, Rev uh, of Acts. I, I don't know why I said Revelation. I'm thinking Revelation, people. I'm thinking Revelation. If I said Revelation, then I'm, I'm really meaning Acts. The Holy Ghost uh, minister's wisdom and prepares lives for salvation. Acts chapter 8 verses 26 through 40 and we're going to ease on over to chapter 9 if you will patiently if you will wait patiently on the Lord he can turn all your enemies into disciples Acts 9 1 through 9 uh, but most of all we don't always want our enemies to be turned into disciples we want them dead if they touch us Lord kill them we, we, we ain't got time for that foolishness they're doing too much anyway so um no, he, he just cut me off, kill him. He just called me a hootlum, kill him. He, 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 uh, he tried to rob me, kill him, Lord. Kill them all. Kill all them devils that try to rob us. Kill all them devils that, 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 that uh, 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 um, uh, don't see us as they see themselves. No, kill them all. We are impatient, and we wouldn't want that to happen to us. So, people, you don't even have uh, a glimpse of what hell is like. But if you had a glimpse of what hell would lack, you would not want anybody to go to hell. Hell is real. Hell is real. And because hell is real, you don't want anyone to experience hell. You want God to deliver all people from hell's fire. You don't want nobody to go into hell. So oftentimes, and I tell people this, don't be willing to send somebody where you're not ready to go. You have a whole lot of people telling people to go certain places. And don't be so don't be willing to send people where you're not willing to go yourself. Alright? Amen. So that's first and foremost. The Holy Ghost ministers wisdom and prepares uh, lives for salvation. We um, in our introduction, we were talking about how the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost does not give you all the information. What the, whole, what the information the Holy Ghost is going to give you is going to give you is what you have learned. What the Holy, what the, He will bring back to your remembrance whatsoever God has said to you. If God has spoken to you, the Holy Ghost will definitely bring that truth back to you. And also, you're going to need some foundational truth. The Word of God is the foundational truth. Get this foundational truth in you, and the Holy Ghost will always bring it back to your remember. He is not going to speak of himself. He's not going to lead you and say, I am leading you here. I am telling you to do this. I am telling you to do that. The Holy Ghost is not going to do that. Now, you will find in the scriptures, in the scriptures, and in the lesson that we're getting ready to go to, when it was when someone was led into the wilderness or led a certain way, then the Bible will make it clear and says, an angel led them. Uh, the Lord God led them. Uh, the Lord told them uh, 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 X, Y, Z. But if that's not happening, understand, people will say, oh, the Holy Ghost told me this. The Holy Ghost told me that. First of all, don't lie on the Holy Ghost because that's not his job. His job is to bring back 
the things that you have learned. Whatever God has said to you, he's going to bring it back to your remembrance. You build your life off of a, a, a fundamental truth. You build your life off some uh, gospel basics. And this is why we're here, to teach you this. And so what the Holy Ghost is going to do, he's going to allow you to remember these things. He's going to bring this to your remembrance. And if you don't know, now you need now you know. Now you need to know what is the difference. You need to know how to be led of the spirit. Of the spirit, how to be led. And he's going to lead you spiritual truth off based off of fundamentals that God have taught you. Just like on yesterday, we were teaching you, uh, listen, don't be going places too uh, um singularly. Don't go places singularly. We're teaching you that foundational truth. Now you're gonna go somewhere and you may find yourself by yourself. And then the Holy Ghost can refresh your members. You remember what the man of God said. Have a battle buddy. Have somebody with you. You don't want to be out here by yourself. There are, there are more oppositions than what you can handle. Your faith is strong, my brother. Your faith is strong, my sister. But you're going to need some additional firepower here. You're going to need something else right here in this area. And the Holy Ghost does work like that. But first of all, you had to get some foundational truth. You had to get some foundational wisdom from somewhere. And it come through teaching. It come through the word of God. People of God, listen. God have us here. You evangelists, you ministers, you men and women of God, you are here for a reason. Teach the truth of God. Teach the revelational knowledge of God. Teach the foundational word of God. And this is the thing that the Holy Ghost is going to bring back to your remembrance. So when you get into the store, oh, Holy Ghost, help me. I don't know if to get black beans or green beans. I don't know if to get lima beans or white beans. I don't know what to get, Holy Ghost. What should I get? What should I get, Holy Ghost? And, and you're waiting on the Holy Ghost to give you an answer. Now, what the Holy Ghost will do, if you don't know, and the doctors told you, the doctors told you, baby, you need to eat some green beans for your stomach's sake. Guess what the Holy Ghost is going to do? He's going to bring back to your members uh -huh, some things that's going to be helpful to your, to your health. He's not going to lead you astray. This is some foundational teaching, and the doctors have led you in a good path. They have not told you a lie, and the Holy Ghost is going to bring up the truth. He's going to bring up the truth. He's going to refresh you with truth and with what is right. He's going to do that. He's not going to tell you a lie. He's not going to lead you down a rabbit hole. He's not going to give you something that is not constructed. He's not going to give you something that is against the plan of God, the will of God. He's not going to do that. He's not going to do it. So if the Holy Ghost leads you a certain way, trust me, he can keep you wherever he leads you. All right? So the Holy Ghost ministers wisdom and prepare lives for salvation. Let's look at this scripture and... Uh, this is coming from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. And the angel of the Lord, this is what I was talking about. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Now, if any of you who've been following my teaching for a little while, you will remember that I told you there are angels, there are seraphims, and there are cherubims. Cherubims, seraphims, and angels. And there are other types of uh, angelic beings and, uh, but the Lord has not given us to know all of them. So I'm, I'm only going to speak of that, the ones that I have, uh, I'm aware of, that I'm aware of. And even in scripture, even in scripture. Now, the Bible speaks of cherubims. And it, when the Bible mentions cherubims, most of the time it speaks of cherubims, you'll see them with wings. Most of the time, when you speak of cherubims, you will see them with wings. And they also have swords. And they are covering cherubim. They are protecting cherubim. They are cherubs that protects. They guard. And they have wings. And they are the Lord's servants. And then there are seraphims. Seraphims are more of the priestly angelic host. Who, who operate around the angelic throne of God. And they, they administer things just as priests would minister. Just as the priest of God would minister in the uh, uh, earth realm, you have the seraphims ministering in the angelic realm or in the heavenly realm. And they do these things before the presence of, of God. 
and if God wanted to call them out of rank and have have the the uh, a cherub to do certain things, then he can do that. He's God. But when you read in the book of, of uh, Revelation and it talks about a seraphim took a, a, a sister, a golden sister, and put hot coals on it, and he administered it a certain way, he is serving as a priest unto God. I'm not saying he's the priest. I'm not saying he's doing that. But the same role that the priests have on the earth realm, seraphims carry out that role into the heavenlies. And uh, cherubs uh, carry out the role as protectors, as messengers, as leads, as guides, and, and, and certain uh, things like that. But when you speak of angels, when you speak of angels, this is when you could be entertaining angels unaware. They will look like you, act like you, but they may not be like you. And this is where you would hear the scripture says in many occasions, not all occasions, not all occasions, but many occasions, you will hear the, the scripture says, and a certain man, and a certain this, and a certain that. It doesn't give a name. It doesn't tell you about their demographics, where they come from, but a certain man or a certain whatever. And a lot of time, not all of that, but a lot of time, this is re in reference to angels. You will not always see angels with wings. They come looking like men, just like you and I. They come looking like you and I. And, and what happens oftentimes, if you are not careful, he will appear as a man, he will talk as a man, and then all of a sudden, that thing that he's doing, you're like, no man can do that. Can't no man doing that. Can't no man do that. And then it stuns you later when you say, oh my God, we've been in the presence of angels. Oh my God. And this is what catches them off guard. So when you read the scripture, New Testament or Old Testament, they have not always seen cherubs. They have not always seen seraphim. You don't often see them unless God wants them. They're not, it's not that they cannot travel, but uh, God, when he want a mission on the earth done, most of the time he will send an angel and they will oftentimes come as a human. And you just have to be aware of their presence. He said, be careful how you entertain strangers. You might just be entertaining angels unaware. Don't downplay that. Look at that as a window that, hey, be careful who I'm talking to, or who I am. Don't be willing to cuss people off and throw the bird at them and cuss them out. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. We don't do that anyway. We're going to be cursing people out anyway. But be careful who you're getting upset with. Be careful who you're angry with. Be careful, people. You could be entertaining angels unaware. When an angel come, he begin to talk, and you may not understand. You thought those people that was in Sodom and Gomorrah thought that they were angels? No, they look like men. They look like men. Send those men out. Send them out that we may know them. They look like men. But they had supernatural ability because they were angels. And just when the angel came to uh, uh, Abram and was talking to uh, Abram, Abraham about Sarai, he didn't have wings. But they look, and, and then all of a sudden, when he began to do certain things, then they realized we're in the presence of angels. Same thing with Manoah, where uh, uh, this is Samson's mother and father, uh, father. When the angel of the Lord came there, they thought it was just a regular guy, a regular man of God. But it was not until he jumped into the flame and began to do wondrously that they know, hold up, no man could do that. And then he ascended up into the smoke of heaven. And then they realized, oh my God. We're in the presence of angels. You don't always see that. So even when uh, when Zechariah now, when he was in the temple and he saw, excuse me, he saw an angel of the Lord there, he knew, wait a minute, no one's supposed to be in here but me. No one is supposed to be in this temple but me and this is, he's right there by the, the golden altar of incense and he, he was speechless. He couldn't say nothing. And the angel began to speak to him. And immediately he began to tell him, don't fear. And who he was, he's on assignment from God. <clears throat> and that uh, your prayers have been heard. So while he's discussing this, the man, all he can do is just listen. So an angel, when he comes, when he comes, you may not know he's an angel. So be careful how you entreat them. But in this case, people of God, in this case, as 
pertaining to our lesson. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise. Now, I'm, I'm saying this, and the reason why I'm building my case, the reason why I'm building my case, because Philip is filled with the Holy Ghost. But it's not the Holy Ghost that's speaking to him now. And this is the thing that I wanted you to understand. This man of God is filled with the Holy Ghost, but it's not the Holy Ghost that is leading him to the backside of the desert. The Holy Ghost needs something to work with, foundation of truth. And the Holy Ghost is not going to lead you somewhere where he cannot keep you. And if you, it may not be in you to go to the backside of the desert. It might not be your thing. You just would not go to the backside of the desert by yourself. It's not in you. And especially if you don't have that foundational truth, that foundational word to lead you there and that God can use you anywhere, you just may not want to go. You go to Samaria before you go there. And this is what Philip did. He went to Samaria before he went anywhere else. And it says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. He's plainly saying, this is a desert place that I'm sending you. Go there. He doesn't have any more instructions other than that. Go down toward the south unto the way that goeth down to Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. The, the Holy Ghost didn't say that, but it's the angel of the Lord that says that. Philip is filled with the Holy Ghost, but why is it necessary for an angel to speak to him and tell him where to go to the backside of the desert instead the Holy Ghost is telling him this? Why? Because the Holy Ghost needs some foundation truth. He needs some foundation to work with. And when you put this word in you and you walk by this word, you live this word, you chew this word, you digest this word, the word of God is what's going to lead you. And the Holy Ghost is going to bring that to your remembrance. And this is why it is so. it pays for the men and all women of God who are handling the word of God to teach you what the Bible said. I cannot teach you my my, my, my testimony. My testimony what God did for me. I have many testimonies, but I'm not teaching you my testimony because you are not saved by my testimony. You're going to be saved by the word of God. Any of you who get saved, you're going to get saved by the word of God. I got saved by the word of God. But by the word of God working, he worked through me a certain way. And this is my personal private testimony that God gave unto me. But it took the word of God to save me. So what I need to give you in order for you to be saved is the word of God. You're not going to be saved by my testimony, but you will be saved by the word of God. Now, can my testimony help? Yes, my testimony can help, but that's not why I'm here. Peter's testimony can help, but listen, Peter is not giving his testimony. I know we are not in the book of, uh, of uh, Peter. And we, we're not even talking about Peter right now. We're talking about Philip. And Philip is not sharing testimonies about his personal self. He's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's going to do. And the angel of the Lord leads him to the backside of the desert. And there, uh, uh, so he will lead to, but wait, wait, the Holy Ghost didn't lead him. The angel of the Lord spake to him and he went. But now that he's there in the desert, now let's see what happens. Let's see how the spirit of God is going to operate with this. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. This man is coming to Jerusalem to worship. This man is an Ethiopian. He is a dark man by, um, by, 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 by race. Uh-huh. And uh, he's on his way. He, he's under great authority. So all for you, all people who talk about you don't have any authority and that you don't have this and you don't have that. Baby, you was raised up in authority. You was it's, it's in your genes to operate in authority. It's in your demographics to operate in authority. And this is probably why it's so hard for you to get it because the table have turned. Somebody in your lineage did some things that was not, that was unbecoming and the table turned and now you without the authority and you need to, if you know, if you know, if you know the plans of God for your life, you'll say, Father, I need to, oh my, you don't need to, you, hallelujah, Father, let the authority return. 
What authority? God's authority. Forget the authority of man. Father, let your authority return. Let the authority of the Holy Ghost operate in my life. Let it operate in my life. And it's not that you would know what to do with it. Baby, that will come natural for you. Operating in authority comes natural for you. It is in your genes. It is in your genes to worship. You may not have known that, but it is in your genes to worship. Unbeknownst to you, because you didn't know where you come from, but it's in your genes to worship. It is in your genes to seek for authority. And that's why you're so driven to authority. That's why you're so driven by people who operate in power and authority, because this is in your genes. How do I know it's in your genes? If you can't find a man nowhere in your lineage, if you can't find a man nowhere in your lineage who operates in power and who operates in authority, that's fine. It all goes back to God, who's your heavenly father. He is the God of authority and power. So if you can't find a man in there that operates in authority and power, go back. Keep on going back in your lineage. Keep on going back, further back, further back. Bypass all them hoodlum. Bypass all them drunk. Bypass all them winos. Bypass the biblers. Bypass the, um, the, the hormones. Bypass the pimps and the pushers and the drug dealers. Bypass the giants and everything else. And you're going to get to God. You're going to get to God. You're going to find yourself somewhere in a lineage. And it's going to bring you back to great authority. Great power. So that's in your genes. And if you would just ask God, Father, forgive me. I wandered astray. You, your word says that, that, that every man is born of a woman. Everyone, everyone that's born of a woman was born into sin. But Father, I've sinned. I've done wrong. Forgive me and bring me to your original desire for my life. Bring me to your original plan. And it's your plan that I walk in authority and power because you have designed me into your likeness and into your image. And your image and your likeness is not looking like man. But the man that you designed us, you made us to be man. Man has its original root from the dust of the earth. But what is that part of man that looks like God? Spirit. Spirit looks like God. Spirit is of God. But when God designed man, God designed him from the dust of the earth. God made him from the dust of the earth. Man, Adam, Adam, Adam has to do with the earth. Adam had to do with earthy. Adam had to do with the soils of the earth. And this is where he come from, the dust of the earth. And that's where he's going to return. But if you want to know what the, 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 the origin of you that looks like God, spirit. Baby, God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what ties you to God. You want to know how you look? To get to that. Get to, That will tie you to God. You can't tell me you don't know what truth is. If you would just simply stop drop and roll. Father, have mercy on me. I'm a backslider. I'm blind. I cannot see a far off. I'm a liar, manipulator. I'm a sinner. And I want to know who I am, who you have you made me to be. And if you're not careful, you're going to hear, what is man that thou God is so mindful of him? What is man that thou God takes the time to even visit man? Why? Because this man that God took the time to create from the dust of the earth is walking around, is walking around with a portion of God in him. When man, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, he became a living soul. He is spirit, possessing a body, having a soul. Y'all need to hear me. Y'all need to hear me. Baby, you thinking that you look like the flesh that you are. Baby, that's that sinful nature you've been exposed to. But when God designed man, man opened his eyes and he began to look and he could look into the realm of the spirit and see the glory of God, the beauty of God, the splendor of God, the angelic host of God. And there was no distance between he and God. Yet he was on the earth and yet God's in the heaven. He could see God in glory, find wave at him if he wanted to. But yet there was no distance. There was no cloud to separate him from God. Just the beauty, the splendor. The birds did the birds thing. The fowls of the air did the fowls of the air thing. 
the, the, the plants of the earth did the plants of the earth and the fowl, the, the, the fish in the sea did their thing. Everything did its thing. And man on the earth were yet was able to honor God from the earth and yet see the splendor of God. None of that was moved from him. None of that was a darkness to him. There was no veil between he and God. He could see the glory of God. And it wasn't until he sinned that his eyes came open to the things of the world and closed to the things of God. And he could no longer see God. He could no longer see the beauty of God. He was ashamed of himself and he could not see God anymore. And then when God did come to see about him, to talk to him, he could no longer see God, but he can hear God work walking in the cool of the day. He can hear him, but he couldn't see him. People, we have been misplaced. We have been uh, 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 um, um, yeah, bamboozled and hoodwinked. We have been bamboozled. We have been uh, on, on a whole nother plateau. But we need to find our way back to God. And the Lord God sent his son Jesus into this earth to bring us back to God's original plan for our life. And this is what's so unique about Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. Is to bring us back to Father. To reunite us back to Father. To bring us back to his glorious plan for our life. And for those persons that will receive him into their heart and say, Father, I believe you. I believe you. To them he give power to become the sons of God. And for those who reject him, who don't want to have nothing to do with him, to them they will lift their eyes in hell. Children of disobedience, children who don't want to have nothing to do with their father. He's going to do away with them. They are not mine own. They are not mine. They're not mine. If you don't want to have nothing to do with your birth father, your real father, your real spiritual father, you don't want to have nothing to do with him. Baby, you've been bamboozled and hoodwinked. You bought into that mess that the world began to teach you and you don't have a right to be in heaven. Yes, I said it. You don't have a right to be in heaven if you're going to forget God. You're going to turn your back on your original father, your real spiritual father. You want to turn your back on him? If you turn your back on your original father, I say like Jesus says to you, you are of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning and the father of lies. You have no right. But if you can say that God is my father, God is my eternal father. And yes, I believe you. I believe your death, your burial, your resurrection. I believe that you came on the earth for, to, to, to point me to father. Because no man can come to the father except the son draw him. So I believe. If you can't believe that, you're none of his. It's a waste of time. To even preach to you what? Preach to you what? 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 You're none of his. Jesus says to them, uh, 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 you, you saying that you are of Abraham's seed. Baby, if you was of Abraham's seed, you wouldn't be trying to kill me. Abraham loved me. <laughs> they, could, they couldn't believe what Jesus was saying. But Abraham loved me. And that's why it's not good for you to be so in tune with the earth ram to the world that you're going to reject Christ. Don't do that. Amen. So, and he arose, talking about Philip. Philip arose and went obedient and behold a man of Ethiopia and an eunuch of great authority under Candace queen of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem to worship when re was returning and sitting in his chariots uh, chariot and read Isaiah the prophet he's reading the book he's reading foundational word he's reading this thing then the spirit not the angel now this is not the angel the angel led him there. Now that the angel led him there, then the spirit says unto Philip, wisdom. <laughs> I love the way it's working. The whole the angel said, go, 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 go. Go out here to this place. Go to Mississippi. Go to Alabama. Go to uh, 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 Anguilla. Go to wherever the Holy Ghost, uh, wherever the Spirit of God leads us, you go there. And then the Holy Ghost uh, says, all right, now that you're here, the Spirit says unto Philip, go near, join thyself to his chariot. He's telling them what to do now. This is that wisdom. Go now, go near, and join thyself to his chariot. Because Philip not knowing what to do. He's there. 
and he's waiting on more instruction. But the angel of the Lord is no doubt. He's not there no more. So the angel of the spirit speaks up and says, uh, Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither, ran, ran. He didn't walk. He didn't slowly walk like he didn't know what to do. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. He heard him read. But notice how wisdom, notice how wisdom begin to speak. And, uh, and the wisdom is speaking to him. And then he says, uh, uh, understandest thou what thou readest? Do you understand? The Holy Ghost will put, the Holy Ghost will allow you to be in the place. The angel of the Lord, or the word of God, and, and in the Old Testament, it said the word of the Lord came unto Isaiah saying, and the word of the Lord came unto uh, Elijah saying, and the word of God came to this person saying, and the word of the Lord came to these people saying, you know, the word of the Lord will speak to you just like that. And, and so in this case, uh, the word of the Lord will come to you and say, go do this or go do that. And look like it comes to your to you, it may seem like it came to your thought. Or to you, it may seem like it came to your mind, Minister Charles Bryant. It may seem like it came to your mind, but it really comes to your spirit. It comes to your spirit. A word comes to your spirit. Uh-huh. Do this or do that. Then do that. And, and, and it doesn't take you long. It doesn't take you long to know if it's of God or of your flesh. If it's of your flesh, most of the time, it's going to have lust with it. If it's of God, it's not going to have lust with it. It's not. It's not. It's not going to be driven or motivated by lust. Seeing what you can get out of it. Seeing what's in it for you. When it's in it for you, you, you that's lusting. When God allows you to do it, you may not know, but you're following the lead of God. And just do what he say. And he might lead you and you don't know why you're there, but you're not worried about why you're there. You know you're there for a good reason. I was in a church once and I was in Germany. I was in Nuremberg, Germany, and I was in a church once. And I was uh, uh, emceeing the service. And uh, after I emceed the service, I was getting ready to take my seat. And so the person that was just called, uh, get up and do what they was called to do. And it, immediately the Holy Spirit said, go to the bathroom. I didn't have to relieve myself. I, I, I don't know why, but the Holy Ghost said, go to the bathroom. And immediately I'm walking from uh, the podium and I'm going to the bathroom. I got to walk through the congregation to get to the bathroom. There's no bathroom behind me, but I'm walking through the congregation to get to the bathroom. And when I get to the bathroom, the Holy Ghost, uh, and this is the Holy Ghost now, he says, look outside the side door, check your surroundings. And I open up the door to check my surrounding, and here's two hour youth out there in the mix, getting ready to take it to another level. And yeah, they wasn't expecting to see somebody come out there. No, they wasn't looking for that. People don't go out there. But I stepped out there. Hold up, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't need to go any further. But that, that was a wrap. Whatever happened there, that was a wrap. So what I'm saying, that somebody, somebody's daughter was about to get pregnant. Somebody's daughter and somebody's son. Somebody's son was about to make somebody's daughter pregnant. But because I spontaneously, immediately did not bait with the Holy Ghost, just did what the Holy Ghost did. He just leading me in truth. And, and, and the word that was coming to us, be watchful. Always know your surrounding. But I had to get that foundational truth from somewhere, from the word that was teaching us. Foundational truth. Know your surrounding. Know those who labor among you. Always be watchful. Be on your cue. Always be watchful. And in this case, I'm being watchful. Um, something had to happen to put that in me to be watchful. Men, you have to be taught to be watchful. You have to be taught how to be observant. Men, women, all of us have to be taught that. If no one teaches you to be observant, if no one teaches you to be watchful, you think you're going to be watchful? No, you're not. And the Holy Ghost will bring that back to your remembrance because somebody done taught you. You got to put something in there first. Put something in, in, in your spirit. Put something in your spirit. So that's why it's necessary to read, necessary to pray, necessary to study, necessary to study to show yourself approved unto God. Workmen need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Study, read, hear, listen, absorb yourself into it. 
And so when that happened, we cut that down. Oh yeah, no devil, that's not happening. And that daughter was able to live another day. <laughs> that daughter was able to move another day and not be pregnant. And that son was able to go another day and not uh, uh, suffer shame or, or whatever, or uh, have to, you, you know what I'm talking about, to do something that was not of God. Amen. Shut it down. All right. And it says, understanding what thou readest. And he said, how can I except some man guide uh, uh, should guide me? And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Oh, and let me say this. I, I, I ran off a little too soon. I ran off a little too soon. I, I got to go back. Let me back up the train. Back up the train. And one reason I'm backing up the train, there was a point that I wanted to say. Now, the Holy, the Spirit of God allowed me to go to the place and observe this. And after I've dealt with it, there are certain things you do in order to deal with this. You have to. You have to deal with certain things to cut it off. From you got to cut it off from the root. You don't just look the other way and say, "Okay, don't y'all do this no more." Softy? No, 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 no. Somebody's uh, a daughter, parent need to know uh, where well, little Sally may well. That's not her name. And some uh, uh, a parent need to know where Johnny were when they was in their hand clapping, foot stomping, and somebody jumping uh, under the beat of the hammer organ. Somebody need to know that they was lingering and doing whatever certain thing, and they had to deal with that. Now somebody said, "Nah, you had to go too far." Nobody need to know the devil is a lie. You cut that devil's uh, um, hands off. You cut his feet off. You don't give no place to the devil. Cut it off. And so then, when you do that, do you keep harping on it? You don't keep harping on it. Matter of fact, this is, I think, the second second time I ever mentioned that after it happened. Second time. And why am I giving it now? Because in my lesson, I see an occasion to utilize it as an example. That's all, as an example. But after that happened, there was not no need for me to keep hashing this thing. And to every time I see that son, that, that young son, or to see that young daughter, to always throw it up in the face. No, something was prevented. And that was all necessary. And listen, husbands and wives, understand this. Understand this. If you were able to prevent something, God bless you. Now keep it moving. Do your husband or do your wife need you to keep throwing that up in their face because you prevent something from happening? The devil is a liar. And see, when you start doing that, you start devaluating things. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You'll start devaluating things. You'll start going into a place where now you're going to ruin some things because you got to know, sir, ma'am, you got to know, yes, they're saved, but they're going to still have emotions. They're going to still have feelings. And, and, and their feelings need to be under check. We know that. They still have to carry the cross daily. We know that too. You still got to operate as, as, as professional. We know that. You're going to have to abstain. We know that. But don't ever come and act like as if that you don't have no temptations. Don't act like you're not bothered. There's some of you who are bothered, but you sneak and hide what you do. You hide behind the closed door. You hide in the bathroom, though, and go and masturbate behind closed doors. Just because nobody sees you, you think it's okay. It is not okay. But nobody want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about that. Just because you're not physically indulging with somebody, and then all of a sudden you do certain things to yourself behind closed doors. No, it needs to be dealt with. And when it's dealt with, you still don't need nobody throwing that up in your face on a regular basis. You're going to start losing trust. You're going to start losing confidence. You're gonna, it's going to start destroying relationships. It's going to destroy a whole lot of things. And you've got to learn how to build blocks to let's deal with it. We need to work with this issue and keep it moving. We need to work with this. All right, that was a glitch in our marriage. That was a glitch in our relationship. That was a glitch. Let's deal with that glitch and let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. You're gonna keep it moving just as if you had a sore, a wound in your knee or on your leg or in your back. You heal it. And when it's healed, you keep it moving. You don't, I have wounds now I can't even find in my body. But before, they were like petrifying sores. They had band-aids on, and they, and they kept running, and they kept 
oozing and kept doing some other things and put band-aid on it, had to clean it, had to do some other things. And now I don't even know where they are. Because why? I don't bring them up. I don't deal with it. I'm not pacifying the hurt. I don't look at the hurt. I don't remember the hurt. I didn't take a picture of the hurt and I don't keep remembering the hurt, the scars, the wounds. No, there's too many other great things to do. Too many other great things to do instead of being stuck right there. If you learn how to get stuck in your past, it's going to ruin your marriage. If you learn how to get stuck in your past, it's going to ruin your relationship. If you learn how to get stuck in your past and you can't heal from that because you have a hurt that cannot be healed, you're going to end up not forgiving, not working through that, not repenting and not forgiving, and you're going to keep going through life, throwing that thing up, and you're not going to be healed. And it's going to ruin your relationship or it's going to ruin your marriage. You don't want to do that. People, you don't want to do that. Now, it, it, it might not be, it may not be uh, the, what you've been used to, but it's a different method. But deal with that method. Work through that method. You got to save what you got. Heal wherever you, if you've been in a place that need healing, heal it and keep moving. If you have a husband or a wife who have messed up and have done some things Deal with that thing and get healed from that thing and keep moving. You don't need to be going somewhere and all of a sudden, man, I can't I can't trust my wife to be at home by herself. I can't trust my husband to be at home by herself. Maybe he's doing this now. Maybe and you can you can't you can't go to, to Walmart without thinking he's doing something. You can't go to uh, uh, the dollar store without thinking she's doing something. You don't need that type of you don't need that type of relationship. You don't need it. You don't need the people. There are some things that need to be dealt with or healed. You need to be healed. You need to be healed. You need to be healed from the hurt, healed from your past, healed from situations, healed and keep it moving. Because if you're going to build and move forward, build and move forward. And if you're not going to do it, you, you, you ain't going nowhere. I'm just trying to say, this is not a marriage council. This is not a marriage enrichment seminar, but we, <laughs> Jesus. Oh God, y'all need to help my brother out. Maybe somebody not pray for That's it. Pray for me. Somebody pray for me. Pray for me. Amen. Pray that we move forward. The Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, join thyself to the chariot. And Philip came and ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, I, uh, How can I except some man uh, should guide me? How can I accept some man shall guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So Philip gets in the chariot and, and, and then the, and then he read. He get to the place. He get to the place of the scripture which he read, which he's reading from. And this is what and, and, and it was this. And it said he was led. This is what the man was reading. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So open he not his mouth. And when he was reading that, he didn't understand what he was reading. Why is that? As I have been saying before, the Bible does not explain everything. People, I'm going to tell you again. The Bible does not explain everything. And this man, though he's reading the word of God, it's not explaining everything. You need the Holy Ghost to explain the Bible. The Holy Ghost explains the Bible. The Bible don't even explain the Bible. The Bible doesn't even make the Bible clear. But you need the Holy Ghost to bring clear, clarity to the scripture. The Bible says, the Bible says the Bible was written by holy men. Holy men wrote and they were inspired or moved by God. And you need the Holy Ghost to give you the uh, understanding. It's just as it was when Jesus was teaching the people. And when Jesus began to teach the people, he talked to them through parables. And they heard it. But not all of them understood it. But it was his disciple that came back and says, could you tell us what that parable meant? And then he would give them the meaning of the parable. And then they were like, oh my God, that's what that meant. But do you think everybody understood the parable? No. They heard it as a good story and that was it. They left it there. But it was his disciple that said, come on and give us meaning to that parable. What does that mean? So what does this mean for us? You think the world is going to ask me what this means? No. Who's going to ask me what this means? It is those who are listening to the word of God. 
that's going to appreciate the teaching of God and have the word explained to you. It is those who love God, who want more from God, are going to appreciate the teaching of the word of God. But this here, these videos will be on Facebook and YouTube every day, all day long. You think people are going to rush to it to hear what it said? No. Uh, he's too long-winded. Mm, he's too this. He's too that. And they're going to they gonna have all kinds of excuses under the sun. But one thing for certain, if they get in trouble and look like the Lord is soon to come, and they're like, man, nobody told me, nobody told me. And the Lord pointed this video out to them. What they're going to say then? Oh, my God, I didn't know. It was right there before my very eyes. I did not know. Listen, people, listen. It's not the sinner who's going to be hungry for what's happening. It is the righteous need to be hungry. Because if this gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. But we need to get hungry about this and go to the hedge of the highways and compel men to come to this truth and to come to God. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so open he not his mouth. In his, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom spake the prophet this? Who is this that the prophet is speaking of? And, uh, uh, of himself or of some other man? Notice what he's saying. This is the prophet now. And he says, of himself or of some other man? Who is he talking about? And this is where then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. At the same. I'm telling you. The Holy Ghost wants basic fundamentals. The Holy Ghost wants scriptures, baby. You give the Holy Ghost scriptures, he'll be like the angel uh, that came to visit Manoah. Y'all remember the story of Manoah? If you give the Holy Ghost scriptures, the Holy Ghost will do like the angel did that came to visit Manoah. And Manoah offered a sacrifice. He said, don't give it to me. But if you want to offer a sacrifice, then you give it to God. And Manoah offered a sacrifice to God, built the fire, offered a sacrifice to God. And the Bible said the angel jumped in the flames and did wondrous leg begin to perform wondrously in the flame and then went up into the flame and Manoah did not see the angel no more. When you give the Holy Ghost uh, uh, the word of God, when you give him the word of God, he rejoices at the word of God. And this is what the man is saying. He's saying, uh, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, 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 who is this talking about? Of whom speaketh the prophet? Uh, 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 this right here of himself or uh, of some other man then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus now I've got to show you how the scriptures connect to Jesus the man of God is preaching about Jesus Jesus had not even come yet but he's talking about Jesus he was Jesus is the one who was led like a sheep to the slaughter he's the one that was a, 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 a lamb that was dumb before his shearer he's the one that did not open his mouth he's the one that was humiliated but yet and still and even in the midst of judgment his life was taken from him and, and, and who can declare his generation for uh, uh, his life is taken from the earth and the eunuch, y'all know the story. But let me jump down to 20, 36. And as they went on their way, Philip is preaching, Philip is teaching the word of God. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain, uh, a, a certain body of water. So Philip had to talk about water. Philip was teaching them about being baptized. Philip had to talk about John the Baptist and water baptism because Jesus baptized nobody. John, um, G, um, Philip had to talk to him about water baptism. He had to teach him about being baptized into water unto repentance. He had to talk about the Holy Ghost. He had to talk about Jesus. He talked about all of this within that time. And this is what caused this man. That's what I talk about. Fundamental truth. Fundamental. The word of God is the foundation of truth. And so while they're driving in the chariot rising, riding, they come to some water. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said unto Philip, hey, here is water. 
But what does hinder me from being baptized? I heard what you said, but what is it that's stopping me from being baptized? Is it something else I need to do? Do I need to crawl into my mother's womb again and be born again? What is it that I need to do? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, and this goes for anybody who's listening to me right now and do not know the Lord Jesus as their Savior. If you don't know him as your Savior, listen to the words of Philip. Philip said, if thou believest with all your heart, with all your heart, the word that I'm speaking to you, if you believe with all your heart, thou mayest be saved. Thou mayest be baptized and thou mayest be saved. But understand now, understand, this baptism that I'm giving you is what John said. John said, when I, baptize, when I take you down the water, I'm baptizing you unto repentance. But there's one that cometh after me whose shoe lashes I'm not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. People, you got to understand the importance of this water baptism. You thought it was just a figment. You thought it was just a little show. You thought it was just a little a symbolic sign. Baby, it's more than a symbolic sign. Just because you have done away in your dispensations and in your time, you have done away with the true meaning of repentance. And because in your dispensation, you no longer know what the true meaning of repentance means. It doesn't mean that this is obsolete anymore. It does not. See, here's the thing about true repentance. If you're going to truly repent to someone because you did them wrong, you brought them a gift. You brought them a gift. If you were truly sorry, you done somebody wrong. If you killed his cow and you barbecued his cow, and now that you're full and your stomach is pot-bellied because you're now full, if you're going to repent for killing that man cow, you better have another cow. You better have a goat. You better have a sheep. You better have something. You better have something to show that, listen, I'm sorry. Take this gift of mine, please. I'm sorry that I, I, I did this thing against you. Show some sign that you really mean it. And see, here's the thing, that in that day, and it's happened way before John the Baptist, but this was the norm of the day. When you're going to repent, when you're going to say you're sorry for something, you brought something that was worthy for repentance. Bring something fit for repentance. Bring something. And it's in the story. It's in the scripture. And uh, they would bring something to, to show that they was meaning business. And, uh, and, so back, and so when they brought these things to show that they meant business, then John would baptize them into water unto repentance. So what are you going to bring God? What are you going to bring God? Bring God something. And when you go down into the water to be baptized into water, this is signifying, I believe. I believe. Lord God, I believe. I believe. And yes, it's a symbolic sign, but in the realm of the spirit, being baptized in water, it says, I believe in your death and your burial and your resurrection. I am a believer. I am indeed a believer. This is not just word say. This is not just you running off at the mouth. This is not you giving your word and ready to take your word back. No, this, this is that thing that says, I am a believer. Take me to the water. Take me to the water because what's going to happen is because this is going to testify on me my behalf. The water, there are three that bear witness on. Somebody, if you if you listen to me, somebody get that strip and pull it up. If you remember, there are three that bear record in the earth and there are three that bear record into the heavens. I don't want to butcher the word. I, I, I remember it, but there are three, and I don't want to even give it a try. But there are three that bears record into the heavens, and there are three that bears record on the earth. And there are three that's going to testify on the earth on your behalf. I think it said the water, the blood, and the word. I think it said the water, the blood, and the word that's going to testify against you on the earth realm. On the earth realm. This is going to testify. And so when you say, Lord, I believe. Where is the rest of that? Where is your testimony? Where is the water, the blood, and the word that's going to testify on your behalf? Yep. He went down into the water. Now, I, I, know, I know it wasn't taught you this way, but water have is, it, has a, it have its place. There's a spiritual connection here. 
there's a spiritual connection here that you don't break apart. Thank you, woman of God. She, she, she gave me the, the, the where it's found, but it doesn't give me the scripture where it says thank you, though. Thank you. She said, First John 5, 7 through 9. First John 5, 7 through 9. I will find it. Amen. First John 5, 7 through 9. Thank you so very much. First John chapter 5. Amen. 7 through 9. Let me read this for you. For those of you who don't have the word with you. For there are three that bears record in the heaven. In the heaven. There are three that bears record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. They will, they will testify for you or against you in the heaven. And there are three that bears witness in the earth. The Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. And listen, I'm trying to tell you people, this is going to testify for you or against you. For you or against you. Don't downplay baptism. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't let no devil in hell fool you and think, no, no, no. Yes, you need the Holy Ghost. But there are three that's going to bear, uh, are going to bear witness with it. And don't let the water say, Father, he didn't come unto me. I, I, he, he didn't, he didn't, submer he wasn't submerged unto me. He, he wasn't. He, he, I, I, I don't even know him. Mm -mm. I don't know who he is, Father. I don't know him. Don't let the blood says, I don't know him. He never applied anything of me. He didn't. He didn't. There, there's nothing here. He, he ain't never said the blood is Jesus. <laughs> now, I'm just, I'm not saying that's the way it goes. I'm not saying that way it goes. God knows. But there are three that bears witness in the earth realm. And there are three that bears witness in the heaven. Now, listen, I believe the scriptures. And I don't want to be in violations of it. I, I don't. And I don't want you to be in violations of it. I'm going to give you the word of God. And it's the Holy Ghost that brought that to my remembrance. That was not even in my notes. But it's the Holy Ghost that brought that scripture to my remembrance. And I don't think the Holy Ghost, well, I, it's not, I, I don't think, I know. The Holy Ghost is not going to lead me wrong. It's not going to do it. So when you're going to bring something to God, bring him an offering. What offering is you going to bring him? Bring something that he required of you. What did, what, what did he require of you? Go back to the prophet. What did the prophet say? John the Baptist was a different kind of prophet. He was not a prophet like the other prophets of this day. And then he came preaching, listen, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And even Jesus said, when you go out and repeat, you, you, you preach, you preach repentance and tell them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then uh, uh, he also talked about baptism. Now, even though Jesus didn't baptize anyone, because people want to say, well, he was baptized in Jesus, and some say he was baptized in John, but Jesus' the disciples baptized, and they never stopped baptizing. This is the scripture. Even the apostles, they never stopped baptizing. So what? who gives you the right to stop baptizing? Because at the end of the day, in somebody's life, they're going to need it because the water, the, uh, uh, the spirit, the water and the word, they agree together in the earth realm. And I don't want them to testify against me. Father, we didn't see him. He didn't come to us. Did you know? Oh, yeah, I won't. Yeah, yeah, all right. I know my time is up and I got to get ready to go. But let me say this. Let me close this scripture out. We're going to come up with uh, first. Uh, we're going to come up with uh, Acts chapter 9. I have um, two subtitles ready right now in the shoot. We'll just pick up with that on tomorrow. And uh, and so, uh, he said, I believe that Jesus Christ, oh, and Philip says, unto, if thou believe it with all thy heart that thou mayest. And he answered and said, this is what the guy said. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. This is the same thing that's necessary for salvation right now. You, the individual who want to be saved, you've got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. And notice it's the same exact thing. He didn't have to swim seven seas. He didn't have to jump through hoops. He didn't have to run through a fire with a, with a fire brand and wave it and all this other. He didn't have to, he didn't have to sow seeds of a thousand dollars to the man of God. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. So what did he do? He says, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And the man said, he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. 
And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he was baptized. Philip baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, when they had came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. The spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. He is not, listen, he's in the backside of the desert. He's walking or running. He, he hurried up to the chariot. The man don't know where he came from. He just in the desert. And there's the man reading the scroll. He's reading Isaiah the prophet. And then immediately the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. And the eunuch saw him no more. Where did he go? What happened? The eunuch saw him no more. How can he just, we're in the middle of the desert out there. This is not a mirage. This man just baptized me in water, in the desert. But where did he go? Where did he go? Y'all need to go back. Go back and read it for you. Where did he go? Amen. And, uh, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Who did? The eunuch went on his way rejoicing. But where's Philip? Gone. Where? The Holy Ghost just zapped him away. The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, uh, uh, the, um, and the eunuch didn't see him no more. But Philip, but Philip, where is it? He was found. Where? At Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Go back and read the story. Azotus, about how far is Azotus? About 20 miles. <laughs> Next thing you know, the Holy Ghost then caught him away and now he's in Azotus preaching the gospel. When you are operating in that vein, when you're operating on that anointing, when you're so excited to do the will of God and you've taken the brakes off, Listen, you don't need a, a, a Cadillac. You don't need a, a, a Plymouth or a Dodge. You don't need a station wagon, a bicycle, tricycle, highcycle. You don't need nothing. You just go in the name of Jesus. And so what? You don't have a caravan. So what? You don't have a station wagon. So what? You don't have an Astro van. So what? You got Jesus. That's it. You need to get to the next town. Preach Jesus, baby. Preach Jesus. Preach Jesus. And he know how to get you to where you need to be. It doesn't matter about the cost of the gas. <laughs> you don't serve a little micro manager, a mini, mini God. No, you don't serve some God who have eyes and can't see and ears and can't hear and nose and can't smell. And you, you don't serve a God like that. You serve an all wise God. You serve a God who knows everything. And he already know that the gas prices are up. But you know what? If he send you somewhere, he already know that you need means to get there. So don't worry about it. If he send you, you just do what thus says the Lord. Here am I, Lord. Thy servant heareth. And go forth and do what thus says the Lord. My time is up. I've got to go. All right? I've got to go. But I thank God for all of you listening. Amen. Father, I thank you now for your word. And I pray that every listener... Oh, God will be transformed by the renewing of their mind and they would catch it. Let them catch it. Let them see it. Let them understand it. Let them embrace it. Let this word become foundational truth for them, God, that will transform their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, that they will no longer walk in darkness, but into your marvelous light. Allow the Holy Ghost to utilize this scripture, this word that had been given to this people, God, this would give the Holy Ghost something to work with, Father. I gave them your word, and I told this people that this would give the Holy Ghost something to work with. Father, call the people to stand on this word in the mighty name of Jesus, and use them mightily for your name's sake and for your pleasure. They are yours. I place them in your care. They are your people, God. They are not mine. They are your people. These are your words, and these are your people. You brought them out of the darkness. You brought them to your marvelous light. You have brought them to this ministry, and I have gave them your word. Father, you raised them up. You blessed them. Show them your favor. Show them your strength. Heal their bodies. Deliver them from sin. Open their blind eyes. God, put a running in their feet, clapping in their hands, and a song of praise in their mouth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Go in the strength of the Lord and know that God loved you with an everlasting love. I love you all. Be blessed. Be blessed. Let me give you my little uh, 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 blessings, blessing signs. 
Amen. Just to let you know, thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Go in the strength of the Lord and know that we love you. Have a blessed day.